As I investigated water issues along the Colorado River, John Wesley Powell's name kept coming up. Here was the first man to explore these uncharted waters, a geologist, ethnographer, and Civil War hero who later became director of the U.S. Geological Survey. Back in the 1890s, when it still ran free, Powell could already see that our management of the Colorado was headed for trouble. One of the most interesting and, and difficult to categorize people in Western American history is John Wesley Powell. You know, you think of Powell coming here in 1869, the one-armed one major Civil War hero, climbing to the top of this, uh, this outlook here. How did he here. climb to the top of that one? He was a crazy man, you know. He, <laughs> they were constantly having to rescue him and grab him and lower him down things. <laughs> He started on the green and came through the Grand Canyon in a dory with a whole company of men. And there's great stories there where his observations of how violent and temperamental and wildly moody this river really is, they saw it firsthand before any dam had ever been there, before any humans, I mean, white people had ever been there. He came down and he went through the Grand Canyon on this raft with his crew and he looked around and he thought, this is this powerful river that cuts through the west. If, if it was possible, it might be that we could channel this water somehow and use it for human development. But he didn't speculate how that would really be. He thought it would be such a huge undertaking, only something as big as a government could do it. And I'm not sure that that was something he thought would have been a good decision. When he came back from his journeys, he told Congress and he told his, the politicians that the West was not like the East, and we had to do things very differently. And the only way you could make the desert bloom was to irrigate. But he also believed in doing it in a way that was sustainable, and he believed in creating political boundaries around the river, that the river was the, the centerpiece of the Western landscape. And so he advocated for a very different regime than what we have today. There's a wonderful episode in the early 1890s when he was speaking in Los Angeles to the Irrigation Congress, and all these people are saying, oh, this is our hero, he's helping us understand how to get the water into farming. And he listens to these folks and says, one of Western science's great moments where he says, you have made a terrible error here. You are building up decades of conflict and litigation here. There is not enough water for you to have what you are expecting and aspiring to have. How do you think you would have felt about having Lake Powell named after him? He's still spinning in his grave. You read his writings and he believed he was a visionary. He believed in the sustainable use of the resources of the West. Powell could see the river's limits long before climate change and population growth were on the horizon. 120 years later, the Colorado River supports one out of every 10 Americans. Scientists predict that its reservoirs, like Lake Powell and Lake Mead, could run dry as soon as 2021. So how many more trips down its length must we take before we understand with Powell's conviction that this river won't last? <laughs>